10 minutes or so before the start, it's nice to have a final swig or two of water or a sports drink. Dehydration starts when the gun fires, so it's good to get a leg up on the beef. Of course, you should have spent a good portion of the previous day hydrating, so don't overdo it on race morning, unless you like standing in porta potty line. There's that adrenaline again. Don't let it lead you astray. The most common mistake marathoners make is running faster than they should during the first few miles when they feel great. Wait a minute. I'm going to say that one more time because I'm not sure you were listening. The most common mistake marathoners make is running faster than they should during the first few miles when they feel great. Sadly, those who do this pay dearly for their foolhardiness in the final mile. For most runners, a good strategy is to run the first 10 miles feeling like you're going too slow. If you feel like you're holding back, it probably means you're running the right pace. Once the race has started and you're moving at that comfortable pace that seems way too slow, get ready for the first water station. You should start drinking right away before you feel thirsty. I like sports drinks, which get into the system faster than water and bring some calories and electrolytes along. Energy gels work nicely too in restocking dwindling fuel reserves. If your marathon is going to take longer than four or five hours, other foods, bananas, bagels, and so on, can help you maintain energy. Whatever food or drinks you plan to use, make sure you've practiced using them on long training runs so you know your stomach can tolerate them. By the way, if you're new to water stations, here are a few tips. One, you don't need to take the first cup on the first table. Most stations have lots of fluids set up farther along, so you don't need to crowd on the front end to get served. Two, it's tricky drinking on the run. When you've got your cup, consider moving to the side of the road and walking while you drink. And crimp the cup so the liquid pours in a narrow stream, just like you practice during your long runs. Putting fluids back inside your body is the best way to stay cool. But some marathons offer misting stations too. If nothing else, these give a nice psychological lift. If you've decided to use walking breaks during the marathon to help your chances, start early. Don't wait until you get tired. Some people like to set up a schedule before the race of when to walk and for how long, almost like working out split time. By the way, if you plan to walk, move to the side of the road. Marathon races are often crowded, and it's important to let everyone around you have the best possible experience. Be courteous, line up where you're supposed to, Avoid running in groups that block the roadway, and let runners pass who want to get through. Okay, that's about it. You're going to feel fine because you're well-trained. You're going to feel confident because you've familiarized yourself with the course and visualized yourself running past all the major landmarks. You've rehearsed your race, and you know how to respond to surprises. And you're going to run those first few miles at a nice, comfortable pace. So you're going to feel fine until the jackals of fatigue start ganging up on you around 20 miles. If you've been taking sports drinks, running a reasonable pace, and maybe using walking breaks, the dogs will keep their distance, especially if you've been working on your attitude. So arm yourself with positive statements to say at this point, I can do it. I've paid my dues and I will finish. Plan to use these affirmations to combat the fatigue you're going to experience late in the race. Jackals and buzzards be gone. No matter what you do, though, the miles in a marathon, especially the final miles, can be psychologically demanding. Sometimes they just creep by, and you can't imagine you're ever going to reach the finish. Running with a buddy, even one you've just met, can help pass the time. So can taking your mind off the race as much as possible. Think music, gardening, sex, bad poetry, whatever gives your mind a break from wondering how far it is to the next checkpoint. Of course, if you're one of the thousands and thousands of runners who dedicate their marathons to a loved one or who raise money for charity, you've got a built-in reason to be inspired. But whatever your reason is for wanting to finish, try to relax and stay confident. Because you can do it. You will survive. And you will finish. And no matter how tired you are, you're going to love what that feels like.